Welcome to the Back Nine Six Pack with Mitch and Justin. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Back Nine Six Pack. My name is Mitch, joined as always by my esteemed colleague Justin. We are back. It, Fu- yeah. It, literally, so it's only been two weeks, but I swear to God, it feels like we haven't done this in a month. Yeah, that's what I, I told you. I was like, God, it feels like it's been way longer than missing a week. But feels, feels like the first time. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, you were where? Florida. Yeah, Siesta Key, beaching it. Yeah, and I was I was at a for my day job. I was at a, a, a all sales rally up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the mecca of Indiana. <laughs> Step back, Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we're I mean, back. Hey, look, take a week off. Just couldn't make it happen. Big travel day for me on Monday. It was a tough scene. So yeah, and I, there was just knowing my Monday it was just like there was it was just not going to happen. I was at a we had a party at our headquarters, our new headquarters, and like it didn't get done till like nine thirty. Then we went to a bar and watched the end of Monday night. There was just no way it was going to happen. So, but one week off ain't going to kill anybody. So no, but it's good to be back. Yeah. So I'll. Go ahead and cheers. Oh, man. These Miller Lights are really going to help me with my impending seasonal depression that I've is kicked in already, knowing this is going to be probably our last nice weeks until probably March. You and me are probably the saddest of we are the group of us <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to this. I, Dude, I get it so bad, too, but I... You're, it's hitting you way harder earlier than it's hit. It's not hitting me yet. Yeah, I. This is what I was thinking about it today because I was even like my wife's like she's like there's you're just down. It's like you know how yeah, you never really like in years past when you're like all right golf season's coming to an end but you don't ever remember like what the end was. Sure. I I infor- I don't know why I thought about. It. I'm like man, this is gonna be the last nice week we have. This is God Mar- probably March is like our next good week. Like like this, seventy degrees, very golfable weather, and I, it just hit me. Well, speaking of golfable weather, let's hope we get some in about a month. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we are hosting the Turkey <laughs> Open at the Hamilton Elks Golf Club. Uh, Black Friday. Yeah, Haven't we got some teams already signed. Yeah, up? back for uh, Black Friday. Um, I think we got eleven teams right now. Probably. By the end of the week, just talking to some people, we'll probably be up to like 15 teams. Um, so, yeah, if you if you want to get in, you need to get in now. Um, I don't know if we're going to be capped. I, I would, wouldn't think we would be, but we do kind of have to cap it at a certain point because we don't shotgun. Um, and you start running into like 1130 tee times or something, or if there's a frost delay. Like we're gonna start running into like darkness because <laughs> unfortunately, speaking of impending seasonal depression, the clocks turn back November. What is it? Fourth. Oh. Um. So. AKA so, what? Next Friday. Next. Yeah, I guess two two Sunday? next sa- next Saturday or I guess Saturday Sunday, whatever that is. Two two weeks. We got two weeks left. Now you're making me sad. Yeah, I'm just. I, I'm just. But. We 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 might have to cap it just because if there is a frost delay, we can't. We would be running up very close to daylight if we, you know, if we had like if we had to start at eleven, then we had tea times to twelve thirty. We'd start really running up against darkness. Um, so I would say maybe fifteen to seventeen teams is probably going to be the cap. Uh, we'll see. But if nah. you want to play, you need to sign up. So. Send Justin a message. He's yeah, <laughs> he's logistics for this. Like I said, we'll probably have some kind of small tea gift. Yeah. Um, I was already talking to Sean, our head pro, about it. He he said he he can order them. So awesome. Um, nothing crazy. So don't expect to show up and act like you're thinking you're going to get like a Peter Millar belt or something. That's not going to happen. Oh damn! Um, <laughs> I thought that's but, what we were getting. <laughs> maybe one year, but not this year. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's always a good time. I got my partner. Playing with our boy Gunth, we're back at it. He's not out of town this this Thanksgiving, so um, he he's lucky that I'm having him back. Do we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> He's a habitual traveler, the man just jet setting everywhere <laughs> at the worst times usually. 
Yeah, we just found out he's going to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma this weekend. Like, the guy's just a, he's a traveler. Can't be stopped. But not for Thanksgiving this year, and that's all that really matters. Yeah, good. Uh, I hate to see him. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a, not really a couple swap, but I, I feel like you're, like, you know, you're taking my golf spouse from me for a week. I don't, I don't he's like, like it. He's like cheating on you Yeah, a little I don't bit. like it. It feels a little bit like cheating, but we'll, you know, he's got a hall pass for this one. The one thing that I plan on not doing to him is putting him in a bunker at any point in the day. So. That would be very smart of you. <laughs> I, Nick's already, Nick, so Nick is playing, uh, he played Camargo this afternoon. Already talking about he hit 13 or 14 fairways, yeah. striping the driver. I'm like, all right, well, do you just ride that swing thought through Thanksgiving because the one thing we cannot have is him ball in pocket because then we are <laughs> fucked. We've had too many times where he's got we, the lefts and I, you know, me off the tee is a question. We mark, hear so. this all the time. Whenever we're not playing, well, oh man, I'm hitting the ball so good. And then we get, and then we get with him and it's a whole different story. Oof, these are shots fired. Yeah. I'm going to look, I don't think you guys have ever even sniffed winning. No, 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 no. Um, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been second place. I've, I was right on the doorstep for the last two years, um, but you guys have just not even shown up. I like, you didn't had, get off the bus. I think we had one year where we made one birdie, and it was I chipped in on six blue for the birdie. <laughs> so it wasn't even like a putt. No, it was a chip in. Oh, God. Yeah. That's it's, brutal. Look, I haven't touched a club in three weeks, so... Hopefully we change, we're changing that this weekend. That's the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. Finally it just get depends back on what course, course, but that's the plan. Yeah. And I can't I can't leave this hanging. So we, we've got the, the defending champions have signed up. They are back in to defend their title. Matt yeah. Hankel, Jared Wolver, okay. they're back in for another year. Um, got to try to defend. If you win, you got to try to defend. The trophy will go home with the winner this year. It's got to come back, but it will go home with the winner. And I swear if the winner does not drink out of it this year – Actually, here's the rule. If you don't drink out of the trophy, you don't get to take it home with you. Because it did not get drink out of last year. I can't believe it. That's the whole reason I got the trophy that I did with the cup on top. And it did not get drink out of last year. Mm. Unfortunate. That's tough. Very unfortunate. That's so, tough. but it'll be a good time. I'm, I'm, hopefully the weather pans out. But like I said, I've said it in every post I posted out there. This tournament is not for the faint hearted. If the course is open, we play. So if it's 35 degrees and windy, better get you a cart cover. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I might have to go ahead, and this might be the year we invest. We've gone without, and it's I honestly, last year, I think last year. No, good. last year was 50, 58. I mean, it yeah. was, for November golf, it was about as perfect as you get. It was a little windy, but. I will say, the round we had at Otter Creek, uh, I've been properly <laughs> conditioned for any cold conditions because that was by far the worst. And the year before last for the Turkey Open was pretty bad too. Uh, it was it. it was we ran out of propane on the 14th hole, <laughs> and I got out of our I got out of our cart cover. I looked at my brother and my dad. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cold in here. We ran out of propane. They were riding without a cart cover all day. And they just kind of like looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you haven't felt the pain we felt all day. Yeah. It was brutally cold a couple years ago, but we we still played. And I think we had 10 teams for a cold day at the beginning. Because we kind of started this, what, this is the fourth year? I think so, fourth or fifth, yeah. Um, so we kind of started this not that long ago. So we still had 10 teams when it was that cold out. So, But like I said, don't, don't text me on Thanksgiving and be like, Oh, I heard it's supposed to be 38. Like, I'm not playing anymore. You will be blacklisted from the tournament. I don't care. We'll have six groups. I don't really care, but Bang you're going to be black. Life. You are blacklisted if you drop out. So, now we're going to have 20 teams. It's going to be great weather. Yeah. Great times. So Absolutely. Awesome. That's yep. the plan. Yep. Speaking it into existence. Uh, some actual golf you did play recently. We haven't caught up since uh, your victorious Ryder Cup effort, despite the absolute nut low worst outfit of <laughs> oh, all God. time. I felt like, what was it? Was it Celtic Manor? No, it wasn't Celtic Manor. It was Celtic Manor. Uh, no, yeah, the rain no. suits, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but it wasn't that. It was uh, it was the the one before that on European so soil. I can't uh, dare man. No, not that's where the next one's at. Um, I can't remember. But they had like tan on. It was like all tan. Oh, the tan. Um, and we didn't have all tan on, but the, we someone explained it perfectly to me the other day. We looked like kaleidoscopes. 
Kaleidoscopes are a bomb pop, one of the two. Like a bomb pop in a kaleidoscope. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to post this picture with this on here because everybody's got to see them. They were – and look, I'm I'm not the most fit guy in the world, and we definitely do not have the most fit people at our club. These things were not made for big guys. They just weren't. (laughs) Like the 2X was like – borderline large and like the 4x was like probably like a 2x that's a tough scene and you know like look there's some bigger guys out there and that was just it just on top of just looking like a like a bomb pop in a kaleidoscope it was a very tough scene but well at least you played well in one because there are you know i think i sent you the the gif, I was like, you're going to be like Jason Siegel and forgetting Sarah Marshall. <laughs> Just getting your ass beat like, I wish I wasn't wearing this fucking shirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, it did start out that way because we, uh, yeah, we didn't. So I, our captains decided that they couldn't break up me and Ryan because we're teammates in everything. Um, so we were teammates in this and. We got off to, a, actually, you know, here's the thing. We didn't play bad. We just got outplayed in best ball. Um, guy we're playing against drains a 45 footer on the first hole to win it. And we had like 15 footers. We both missed. We didn't play bad. We just didn't make a lot of putts. John, who was on the other team against us made the decent amount of putts, like just either to have and just like, you know, or like to win on the first hole. It's, but we lost in best ball, but alternate shot. We, I mean, I don't know what it is about people that I partner up with. Um, alternate shot for whatever reason is a strong suit. Like, we came out, we parred the first hole, parred the second hole, and then we had a stretch between three and seven where we went birdie, par, birdie, birdie, birdie. Jeez. It was, it was look, there was no no chance for anybody on the other side. Of that. And, and Wes, who was on the other team, plus two handicap, you know, John was on his partner. He was, he's like a two- so like we just came out with just firing all cylinders for alternate shot, um, and then the singles matches. So we're one and one at this point. The singles matches, Ryan played John, pretty equivalent uh, handicaps, and I played Wes. Um, I knew mine and Wes's match was just going to be it, like I didn't know how many holes were going to be won, but I knew like there were just going to be holes where you had to make birdie to tie. Yeah. Um, he wins the first hole. I win the second hole. I had multiple chances to make putts, but like when you're playing, like he's not going to make bogeys. Mm-hmm. So you have to make birdies to beat him. And we tied five holes in a row. Um, and then finally on eight, he made a mistake, three putted. And then on nine, we get down to nine and we both hit wedges in there to like 10 feet. And we both had seven feet coming back. Actually, I think he had like seven feet. I think I had like six feet. He drains it. So now I got to make it to have the, or to win the match. And I did, but, and then Ryan kind of, uh, John didn't play well in singles matches. So we went two and one, uh, we were on the red team. We ended up, we were tied going into singles matches. This was the closest year in the three. This is my third year playing. It. I don't think we've ever been tied going into any leg of it, but we were, uh, or excuse me, we were tied after, uh, yeah, we were tied going in the singles and um, just, you know, we had a couple matches go our way. We had a, a stretch in like the middle groups where we, I think we won like five of the six points available. So uh, that was my second year on the winning team. Always fun. Got the drink out of the cup. My Like it, any kind of, I think any kind of match play, we've talked about it. It's, it's, it's just fun. Yeah, you know nice. what I mean? It's the best. Especially all day match play. Like it's every match you're playing is just, you know, we went from like nine. I think we got done at like five thirty. Uh, it was a good like capper to the year. I think. Yeah. We need to get you in it next year. You can't take a trip during this time. I know these fall breaks and the Ryder cup falling at the same time is killing me, but I've gone to some cool places, so I won't complain that much. Hopefully they'll let us pick the shirts out next year. Oh, <laughs> like God. let us have a little input in the shirts. Something. <laughs> so, oh, all right. Well, speaking of the course, uh, I played it the week before because we had a league night, and it was awesome. Greens were rolling great. Since then, <laughs> continuing our season-long debate, which is mostly taking place on Facebook, and I've basically been an observer, 
we've done some aeration, you know, it's course maintenance season, right? We're in the fall. It's time to kind of wind things down for the close year up for, shop. Yeah. Prep, prep for the spring, get things right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the Facebook group, but I've heard more general shit talking about <laughs> the course, the conditions, the way it's being maintained, all this stuff this year than I have in the previous three years combined. I'm going to say this as nicely as I possibly can. Sure. Typically, the people that are putting that stuff on there, they're the minority that are the loudest, right? Like, that's just, I mean, that goes for anything, realistically. And I, like, it just is. Like, that's how social media works. Like, it's the minority with the loudest voices are the ones that are, you know, saying it. But I think it might be part of the Facebook page that we've had for the first time this year. Yeah. They might be rethinking it. But they do a lot of cool stuff on there. Like, you know, our superintendent goes on and, you know, if you're going to play on a Saturday, like, he puts the stint on there. Like, I, to me, that's cool. And they're like, well, he's kind of pointing himself in a corner. And I'm like, well, I like it. Like, And I'm not going to go out there and, like, hit a putt and, like, John, I don't think they're 11 and a half today. I think they're rolling more like 10 and a half up here. Like, I'm not going to do that. But it's just, right. it's a nice thing. It's like, oh, okay, they, oh, they mowed and rolled today. Like, they mowed the greens. Like, it's just nice. And I think that's how it originally started out. And then just from, like, right from the beginning, like, the first aeration in the spring, it's just been, like, nonstop, like, nonsense from a handful of people. Yeah. I mean, look, you're dealing with, a sport that's played outside. I know nothing about agronomy, but I'm sure there's a million factors, which I, I know there's a decent number because we had a sweet conversation with Dan Francis, who's now at LaSantville. Yep. Previously at Wildwood. Uh, I think he was, I forget what episode it was at this point. One of our first 10 probably. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of talked through a ton of stuff with us about, you know, what they do with their budget, managing expectations for golfers, how they maintain the course, you know, just, across the board, like educated us basically. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just like drop in a clip from him talking about all of that stuff here and we'll catch you on the other side, but here's Dan Francis. Maybe is it, is it a lot of managing those expectations or like, Hey, here's how much money we have and here's what we're doing with the course with that money. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of course it is. I mean, because the budget is outlined and, and in my case, I, I have a number. And so let's meet and try not to beat that number. And and then, you know, how far can we push it? Or yep. what I've become very good at, and I, I credit that, and I'll stay humble here for a minute to, to my resume, but, um, you know, it's finding different ways to accomplish these goals. Uh, you know, yep. and, and, and just – you know, working around corners and being able to shift and, and adjust on the fly. Um, you know, right, currently at Wildwood, we're going to attempt to grow grass in the summertime in Cincinnati from seed where the water runs. Uh, it's it's going to be a sweet trifecta trying to grow grass. But, you know, I think we've come up with a pretty good plan for erosion control. And it's a, oh, it's also not irrigated. So there's there's that as well. Um, but you know, you know, brother, it it really is. It's, it's managing those expectations and communicating and being a successful communicator, um, which I, I have and continue to struggle with. Um, I see your superintendent using social media. Uh, we have behind the scenes an app for our membership where, where I try and touch base, you know, every 30 days or so. Uh, yeah, but then, but then I'm also, I'm also found on the golf course. So there's so much more communication than every 30 days. Um, uh, but when I'm responsible for X, Y, Z dollars that they're paying for, I'd, I'd like them to know how it's being used and what it's being used for. Uh, yep. and then also how, you know, that I like them to see how me and my team are spending our time, you know, on yeah. the property. Yeah, for sure. Cause so much, what, sure. you know, so much of what we do happens before we unlock, right? Happens yeah. happens before the yeah, first shop exactly. door opens, and and, and you know, you know, a lot of guys are are teeing off, and they're playing golf after work, and they don't see us anywhere. So, yeah, like what? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> like, that's are they even here? Correct, yeah. correct, <laughs> correct. And and, and oh. you know, if if we wanted to just take that a little bit further, green speeds in the morning versus green speeds in the afternoon. 
that I, you know, what, what stint meter readings I get in the morning versus what they could be in the afternoon when that leaf blade standing straight up or a thunder boomer rolled through at lunchtime and it, it's going to change. And, you know, just as we're going to watch from Thursday to Sunday this weekend, that, that golf course is going to change. Yep. So, yeah, for sure. It, it, we hear it all the time. The morning pairings versus the afternoon pairings. It's, it's, it's different sometimes for the best and it's different sometimes for carnage. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. This might be a dumb question, but I'm going to go for it. So is this, is your job 365 days a year? Do you get an off season? We, we have an off season, right? And, okay. and that's once, that's once our punting surfaces go to bed um, and, and they, they stay a little dormant, they stop growing. Right. Um, we also make chemical applications in place to protect the grass plant. Uh, for me, I time that with my wife's birthday somewhere right around December 10th is when I'm putting them to bed. Um, that's come sooner. That's that's come later. Um, yeah. Uh, but then but then, Mitch, I mean, the off season, that's that's when we're dropping the trees. That's when we're installing drain lines. Um, you know, for us in the off season, we, we had some we had some car path work done. Uh, we early spring three years ago, we. You know, we kicked off a bunker renovation project, and and, and then also too, uh, I mean, that that golf course isn't maintained by hand. All the entire fleet is is managed through the winter. Those are your oil changes. That's your sharpening. That's so much preventative maintenance. Uh, we had a hydraulic leak this spring. You know, and it's one of those things that can't be caught. But you know, could we have fine tooth combed that machine a little bit better to? to find a bad hydraulic hose or something like that. And, uh, you know, so I, yeah, I saw, I saw that you posted that on Twitter, didn't you? I did. I did. It, I mean, it happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens. To, it happens. But yeah. for, for me, when it happened, you know, I was able to put a sod cutter on the putting surface and we're blessed to have a nursery at Wildwood and yeah, stole it from the nursery and put it out that there. And, you know, yeah, I, I, I took the bad grass and I took the oil spilled grass and put it at the nursery. I might, I might tweet that. I might, I might tweet that one because <laughs> that's what we could have been looking at friends. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, exactly. You know, but uh, yeah, if that happened in July, probably a different story. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Well on that, when you were talking about off season and going into off seasons and maybe coming out of off seasons, I think the question that, but I think by far the question that I hear or comments about and everything like that, airification. Sure. Right? What is let's talk about first the science behind airification. Okay. And and why you do it. Okay. Because I kinda know why we do it, right? I know a little I know enough to be dangerous. All right. But it's by far the number one thing that golfers bitch about. Am I wrong? Yeah, especially because we like to do it when the golf course is getting really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then we blow it up. We blow it up for 14 to 21 days and then we give it right back to you. Because <laughs> like, you're doing it. It's twice a year, right? Most places are doing it twice, maybe even three times a year. Smaller punch, correct? Sure. sure. Like in the middle of the year. Yeah. Um, I do. I do it once a year. So. So come on over, Justin. Come on over to Wild Boy. This is that was my recruiting. Oh that, God, that, I'm gonna get myself in trouble with this. There's my, Holy crap! There's my plug. Uh, <laughs> you know, but should I do it twice yet? Yeah, probably should. But well, uh, you know, I do some other things in the spring. But uh, airification is a. It's a, I, I, there was a time I called it a necessary evil, but it it is a necessary necessity to the golf course's success. Uh, is and uh, I give you a quick, a quick, make it quick. I'm, I'm watching yeah, yeah, that. Quick, yeah. I'm watching that clock yeah, yeah, in the yeah, corner. Yeah. I know you could probably go all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are in in some cases we are removing organic material, and that's with a core airification. So that's a plug that comes out and gets removed. Then we are replacing yeah, yep. we are replacing that hole with sand. So now we have also amended the soil. Why did we use sand? When you're at the beach, is your sand soaking wet? Down near the water it is, but up high it's dry. It's pulling that moisture through. It's also where the water has been down low, it's much firmer to walk on. All right, we like firm, true, smooth putting surfaces. So that sand being there, 
is phenomenal and, 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 and a big part of what we do. Also, your children can dig in that sand with their little bitty hands. So can our leaf blades, so can our leaf plants roots. They can, they can penetrate that better than, you know, I'm talking to a couple dudes from the Elks and, and old school style push up greens. Um, no different than Wildwood just celebrating their hundred, hundred year anniversary. We our, our greens are amended soils. They are not USGA specifications. They do not drain as they should. They don't have choker layers. At least in my case, I don't have any drainage underneath to my knowledge. Wildwood operates on a lot of natural runoff. So with airification, having that sand there, we get better water infiltration. We've amended the soils for easier water uptake, root growth, and oxygen. Um, and and then the, and then there's guys like myself who I, I run a solid time, so I don't pull a core. I just punch a hole, and then I fill that hole with sand. That's another type of application. But everything that I just covered there, minus the organic removal, remains the same. So, no, I am not removing any organic material, but I, I feel through talks with my peers and, 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 and the science behind it that I'm diluting the organic material with yep. sand. And conventional guys are going at 5 eighths diameter. I'm running big boys, three quarters cannonball holes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's me. Yep. And I'm putting out anywhere from 45 to 50 tons of sand across three acres. Which is pretty solid, pretty <laughs> solid. And so that would be your, let me see if I can get the sides right. That would be your red and white course, the old, the old yep. course. Mm -hmm. I, I would ballpark your greens to be about three, three acres there. You do have some bigger ones, yeah, so maybe a little so. bit bigger. Um, and so that that's two, two dump trucks worth of, of, of sand across those punting surfaces, but it's getting worked into that profile and um, it's, it's helping our grass plant stay strong. And, and we do it in the spring so that it can be strong through the summer. And we do it in the fall so that we can rebound from the summer. So yeah, once again, shout out to Dan, the official <laughs> superintendent of the back nine, six back. Uh, I think my favorite part of when we talked to him, I remember him talking about aeration and like he made the joke of, you know, it's not a necessary evil. It's a necessary necessity. Yes. Yeah. It, look, the, if you talk to any superintendent, they hate it just as much as we hate it. Like, it's, it is not easy work. If you, like, if you've never watched greens get aerated in that process, it's not easy. Like, it's, it, it's, it's an, you know, and John said it on our Facebook page. He's like, it's a 13, 14 hour day out here. To get, the, you know, and we have 27 holes, so they're trying to get nine done in a day. Yep. It's, it's a it's a 13-hour process, and quite frankly, we're kind of running up on where we don't even have 13 hours of sunlight. So it's like they're going from, like, before the sun comes up to, like, late in the, you know, in the evening. So mm -hmm. it's it's not easy work. They hate it just as much as we do. Um, they would much rather this not be a process, right? But if you want good greens and you want good greens throughout the years, the months that you're actually playing golf, it, you have to have it. Yeah. You know, I'm really, it's like as a golfer, it's on us to just kind of one, like be open-minded and be curious about it. Right. That's fair. I think it's fine to ask questions. Yeah. But like, if you start from a place of like, okay, they're doing the best they can with what they have and they're trying to give us a quality product as members. I mean, then I, it's kind of hard to, and especially, We've hashed this many a times on here. Like our courses, it's a hidden gem, but it's not expensive, right? right? It's not, it's nowhere near expensive as some of these country clubs and private clubs. Like for what we pay and what we get, I mean, it's the, it's the best value. I'd argue easily in Ohio, probably in the region, quite possibly even further out than that. Like it is that good of a value for what we pay and what we get. You know, I've taken many people out at Hamilton Elks that are members at much more expensive golf clubs. And they're like, how much do you pay? Like, holy crap. Like you get that. Like, no, they probably were out there on a good day. Like there's bad days at every course. We talked about it before we came on. It's like, I know a guy that's at a club, $70,000 initiation fees, probably close to a thousand bucks a month. He's like, our course is shit right now. Like they're growing out the greens. Like 
trying to grow in spots and he's like it just sucks right now like that's that's at a course where he's paying what 20 times what we do <laughs> you know what i mean like uh it's, so and there's other courses like and if you're playing a public course right what are you paying 50 bucks to play that course sure i mean come on like go go somewhere else and see what public golf course courses cost go to arizona go to california like you're paying a hundred bucks minimum oh. to play a golf course Minimum, like it's probably closer to 150 in spike, spike season. So it's all perspective, you know, like you said, to me, if the greens are good in good condition and they're smooth, it doesn't really matter what the speed is. I mean, I'd prefer them faster, but if the greens are good and the fairways are good, there's really nothing else you can kind of ask for, you know, I don't know. That's kind of step down there because i get worked up about it i know i mean i look i don't want to come off also sort of as an apologist all the way around because i do think there are ways like for me like, just get the simple stuff right right like you just said let's have good greens tea boxes like the areas that like you should expect to be in good shape yeah right yeah like if you hit a good shot and you like you don't you don't want to be in like a 20 foot burned out area in the fairway right like and i don't we never get that at our place but you know, yeah, the small, like the, the, or the big things, I guess, should be, always should be good, right? Not great, but good, mm-hmm. I, I think is fair because, like we said, what you're paying to play a public golf course, at least around here or most Midwestern states, is not the norm when you talk about the grand scheme of golf in the United States as right. far as what we pay and things like that. So, right. and I think it's just a good reminder, too. Two things. One, it's an outdoor sport, right? We're subject <laughs> yeah. to any number of variables that Ohio can throw at us weather-wise. Yeah. Yep. And then two, some of it's on us too, right? Like as golfers, fill your divots, fix your ball marks on greens, fix somebody else's ball mark. <laughs> yeah. Rake the bunkers. Like the little stuff of the maintenance really does add up that, you know, we can do our part in making, you know, the superintendent's job easier. Yep. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that goes for like... And that goes on any golf course. Heck, even if you're paying, you know, seventy thousand dollar initiation fee and thousand bucks a month, you should be doing that stuff anyway. Like it's already hard enough. Your your golf course is at the is at the you know the hands of Mother Nature too. Right. You know what I mean. So it's like it's already putting up with that. And you know, I don't know. I'm, there's people that listen to this kind of different areas, like in Cincinnati at least. You know, we go from like cool springs. To immediate like ninety degree summers, and that's a lot of stress on the golf course. And then we go from ninety to like you know the last couple of weeks we've been floating around fifty, sixty. And honestly, our be- at least in Ohio, I think our best golf is in the fall. The grass is just like I mowed my lawn this weekend, so, and I was like, so "God plush. dang, my my lawn is fucking perfect right now." Yeah. It's like our grass is just so good in the fall. I'm you know, but there's a lot of stressors for a golf course. Even you know, go anywhere, Texas, Arizona, like droughts, rain. There's just so many drastic measures that it. So the least you can do to help out is like those small things. You know what I mean? For sure. And I don't want to sound like a like a golf snob, but I think. If you are going to pick up the game, and I hope everybody plays golf. Like, it's the greatest game in the world. But, like, those are the first things you should learn to do before you ever set foot on a golf course, you know. Etiquette of the game's a huge thing, and I think it's for sure gotten lost a bit. At least, I mean, since my competitive days. Like, that was a big deal. Like, I remember being in high school and middle school golf. Like, we carried around a USGA rule book with us at all times. Like, we we learned about raking bunkers and replacing ball marks and all that stuff. Well, and that's the thing too is like we we'll go out and have eight beers and still remember to fix like yeah like you can have fun and do those small things at the same time. It's not like you're sacrificing like I'm not, I'm gonna have twelve beers on a Saturday and go play golf. You can still fill your divot like exactly. You can still replace your divot after that. So yeah, I, I, it just it sucks because you know most guys that are superintendents yeah they're not making. Two hundred thousand dollars a year. What they should for what they put up with and the hours they work, but realistically, you know, they're making an honest living, and they shouldn't have to put up your with your bullshit on top of having to take care of a golf course too. So, yeah. So I mean, there you go. Shout out to the superintendents out there. Appreciate all you do for the golf courses that you serve, and the members you serve, obviously. So, uh, we haven't talked pro golf in a while. No, there's not been a lot. 
going on. We haven't talked about it since the Ryder Cup, which is probably good. We needed a break. I have not watched a shot of anything since the Ryder Cup. <sighs> Me, a little bit. I watched – when I saw there was going to be like a five-person playoff in the Sanderson Farm, I kind of turned it on. Yeah. Like right at the playoff. Um, didn't watch any of the Zozo this this uh, this weekend. I did see some like highlights and things that were going on. Um, but yeah, that's just not – the fall swing, I, and we've talked about this, I can kind of do without it. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. It's definitely optional viewing for golf fans. And think about it. We're pretty, we, we're pretty hardcore. We're in the top 5% of golf, golf fans. fans and, like, say, yeah. we have no desire to watch it. I can't imagine, you know, what the average fan is probably like. They probably don't even know tournaments are going on right now, you know, realistically. No. Um, and the only reason I bring this one up is because Colin Morikawa ended his, you know, 24 month wind drought. Uh, maybe it was 26 or 27. He had not won since the 2021 Open Championship, Oof. which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, I was the first thing I thought when I saw he won, like, was, was it like 10, 10 o'clock on Saturday, Sunday? Yeah. Because yeah. it was like over at that point. I was like, of course he would win, like, the not the most meaningless tournament, but like one of the meaningless fall swing tournaments because why not? And after he had a pretty poor Ryder Cup performance. Yeah. So <laughs> I, you kind of see that often, though, with these guys, like where, you know, they spend so much time prepping for the big events. They'll like they'll win the week after or you yeah. know what I mean, or two weeks later or whatever, you know, like they almost find it. And then they then they do find it like the next week. Yeah. yeah. Or next couple weeks or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so he won by six shots. He was actually two shots back to start the round. Shot a bogey free 63. To go out and win by six. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, six win on tour. I, the one thing that I, I just looked a little bit before we got on here, um, because it really felt like a down year for Morikawa. I mean, obviously the wind, windless drought. But if you looked at his numbers, I mean, he was fourth tee to green, second in approach, and tenth in strokes gained total, putting 112th. <laughs> so honestly, he's still... He's still not great on... The greens still yeah. striking it, but he's always going to be just a hot and cold putter. Yeah, That's yeah, just seems to be. His and own. knowing the weather on Friday and things like that, like you can get away with not punting well in those those conditions. If you're striking the ball well and you're hitting greens that guys are not, and you're hitting more greens than most people in that those weather conditions, like you are probably going to play better. Like in putt, you yeah. could putt bad and probably score better than most guys because. You know, if they're not on the green and you are, if you're striking that well and that kind of wind, like you're, you're, you, it's not it's kind of not surprising that he did win putting that badly. No, I, look, I can attest, my ball gets beat up in the wind. <laughs> so if you're not hitting it pure and it's that windy, we'll get to that in a second, actually. Cause yeah, I think it was Jordan Spieth said he's like the best way. Someone was like, hey, Jordan, like what's the best way to play in the wind? Being from Texas, windy. He's like, uh, you got to hit it pure. Like, yeah. that's I mean, that's the only way like, you can't miss hit shots. And if you miss hit shots in the wind, it takes off in either direction. If you have any kind of side spin, it just takes off in every direction. So yeah, whether you overspin it or you hit a knuckleball, it's just dead. Yeah, because on Friday, I mean, we were talking about it before we came on. Like the the winds were like thirty miles an hour. I mean, it was it was insane. It was that was probably the hardest wins I've seen outside of like an open championship um, on, on like a regular tour stop. Like yeah. it was, it was whipping and the scores, I think the average score was like over par on, on Friday. Well, I've got uh there was a clear runaway winner for who needed the back nine, six back this week. And it came from that second round. Not surprising. Uh, a gentleman, a bloke, a chap. Oh boy. Named Ben Taylor, so not the one that you think. Oh, uh, okay, Taylor. okay. This uh, he's from England. Ben Taylor. He goes out in forty, uh, four bogeys and a double. Classic. It's a par thirty four for some reason. Uh, have to get the back nine six pack, especially in those conditions. Yeah, that's that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Instead, he pars ten and makes eight straight bogeys. Oh my god! For forty four. Hey, you hear that? <laughs> bogey train coming through. He went off the Holy rails on crap. the bogey train. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Eighty four for Mister Taylor. Tough scene, but that wow. was. I'm pretty sure the highest score That's of the day. Pretty bad from a professional golfer, though. Like, yeah. 
Like, that's bad. That's... This is an eighty man field too, so it's not like you know, <laughs> it's not... like that sticks out when you that do that in an eighty man field. That'd be like the you know the old World Golf Championships. Like you're in a sixty man field and you shoot eighty two. Like it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. You do that in a hundred and sixty man event. You probably gets noticed, but not as much as the just smaller field for sure. Yeah, he sh- that's fourteen over par for those counting at home. Uh, he shot twenty over for the week DFL. So, Ooh. yeah, wow, yeah that not that kidding. deserves every bit of. I mean, he might need like a back nine, nine pack or ten pack or something <laughs> one like per hole. one per hole, and then ten. Then you can take one off, like when you get off the green, you can the take patio. it with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Ben Taylor, you needed the back nine six pack this week, bud. Yeah, oh, hundred. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent deserving. I do want to shout something out about the tournament this week. Uh, Joel Damon was there. Did you see the video of Gino after oh, he caddied yeah. on Friday? He went out and played golf, like night golf. Guy's a maniac. They, first off, there are so many courses like that overseas. Like we need more of those. Like that's a full. It's a full fledged golf course as lighted. Like. We need more of that in the United Look, States. Look, I s- straight up of like all of the golfing nations, I'm pretty sure we do it the worst. Yeah, Japan in might <laughs> might do it the best. Like they're close to the best. Like outside of like Scotland and I like leave them aside. Yeah. Like outside the home of golf, those outside of that, Japan legit like might he even said in his videos, like, there's, some, he's like, I was kind of noticing, he's like, there's some pretty good golf over here. Like, Korea, too. Yeah, Korea. Korea is another one that does it really well, too. Um, but yeah, caddy and 18 holes and then going out and playing. That, I thought that was really cool. It's not shocking. I don't know if we've talked about this on our podcast before, but for anybody listening, I don't even know. Go look it up. I don't know what episode it was, but the No Laying Up guys had Gino on, and he went through the story of oh, how he played how the... he broke like the Guinness World Record yeah, for holes played was... in a week or something. <laughs> it is like the most absurd and awesome story in golf. And then he they talk about the story how he finds out that he no longer had it. Yeah, <laughs> so good. They're like, "Did we tell him? No, nah, let him have it for a little bit longer." <laughs> yeah. But he's a, he's a golf junkie. Like I love it, it and he's. I think everybody at this point knows who he is, but he's legit like one of the best guy. Like at least Caddy is like one of the best caddies on tour. Like he's an absolute follow, especially like Instagram, Twitter, oh, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, all the hundred percent follow stuff. him because he's he used to do the cribs editions of so uh, places he stayed. I think he's probably staying in. He's got that Netflix money now. <laughs> he might be staying in some nicer places, but those cribs editions were awesome. But I thought it was really cool how he went out and played after he got done caddying. Yeah, I uh, hopefully you know Joel turns. He had a little bit of a rough year this year, but I'd like to see him get back he, contending more often. He did, yeah. They had yeah. a baby. Yeah, you know. look, it, we saw your golf game. Babies sometimes can go either way. It can be good for your golf game or bad for your golf game. You, you never really know. I, I think it's that when you find out you're expecting, it's a bump. But as soon as the baby arrives, I think that's when. It's a, yeah, you you realize how much. Uh, an actual baby cuts into your golfing time. It, yeah, especially it really when you're not a professional that's like actually, you know, this is... Yeah, you actually job. have an excuse like, hey, this is how I pay the, the mortgage, right. you know. Um, yeah, those, those guys are great. Netflix, back at it again. I saw them post something, like I think it's going to come out like February, like end of February. No, there's something coming up here in November. Oh, well, so that's the... The F1. Yeah, the F1 guys. Yeah. yeah, so that, but there was some, they're, they're, they posted the date for the actual oh, okay. uh, release of, I think it's like February like 26th or for something For the next like that. season yeah. of Full Swing. Yeah, looking forward to that. I, I don't know how, some of it was repetitive last time, but I, I really enjoyed watching that. Like it was... I, even as a golf fan, we kind of knew a lot. We were like, you still see behind the scenes. and Yeah, I think if you went into it understanding that we're going to have to do stuff like explain what a miscut was and, you know, some of the stuff for, you know, people that are trying to, you know, get into the game for the first time, it was fine. Yeah. Some of that as a golfer I'm, was very annoying. Yeah, it's frankly. like... It's like if they if they don't come in the top seventy, <laughs> they don't get to play the weekend. It's like no shit. <laughs> like, then they but act- they did that with the F one too. If you watch the first oh, season yeah, F one, yeah. they're kind of like explaining how things work. I think this time around they're not gonna like they're like hey if you want to know you know go back and watch season one and then you can kind of understand what's going on. So I think there's gonna be less of that this time around. Yeah, I the think. more they just kind of like build around the guys that are playing and all that stuff, I think the better it will be. 
Um, hopefully, assuming these guys have any personality at all. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think they. I think if you if you if you realize they're probably going to follow a lot of the same guys, there's probably going to be some good. Yeah, and especially knowing the year Joel had, if they follow him again, it could be very interesting. <laughs> so. For sure. I do, if there's if Brooks is still involved, I mean him having won a major, yeah, after what it's gonna be good for the first season. Like, yeah, it could be. But I, I am looking forward to that November one where they do they're gonna play like the match or whatever in Vegas. Yeah, I think it'll be a fun little yeah. crossover event. There's not much on TV sports wise other than football. So no F one's in Vegas this year for oh. the first time ever. It's that's gonna be insane too. Not to get off the golf topic, but that's gonna it's be fun. freaking insane. Um, but I think it's a good lead up. I think it's, I think it comes out like the week of the race. Out yeah. There. I think that's yeah. why they did it that yep. way. Yep. That was a fun little detour there. I yeah. Like yeah. I was going to tell us like, maybe we jump into some college football picks for this weekend, but that was way better. <laughs> I, I don't have any picks for you other than bet against the university of Cincinnati because <laughs> they stink. I, I had such, I, I should have known this was coming last week. I cleaned house. Like I hit some parlays. Any straight bet I made just cleaned house up through Monday night last week. And then man, Saturday not good. Sunday like there's no way today could be worse than yesterday. My Sunday betting got even worse. And I told you I was like after this Monday night game I need like a hiatus for like I don't know if I'm going to bet on the Thursday night game yet. We'll see. We'll see how tonight turns out. So I Honestly, I think I'm at a point where I need to stop betting the mainstream sports. The only time I make money, I'm F1, F- you are an F1 tennis, better. soccer. Like these are the ones where I'm actually winning. Soccer, I've gotten into soccer a little bit more this year. Um, shout out uh, Rob Diedrichson, our boy. Like he, I've watched one soccer match with him at a bar, and he gave me a bet that won, and I'm like absolutely addicted to betting on soccer now like yeah. corner betting on the number of corner kicks and stuff like you can look up the stats like how many shots on goals each team have like all right they average eight the over under on the corner kicks is five you're like yeah that's probably a little hot like you, yeah. there's so much i go i love betting on soccer now i'm, I'm fully I engaged you. in soccer betting now yeah it's great f1 betting so good that's currently my favorite i don't know how you do that just on the record i have no i I feel like it's kind of predictable, kind of. It right? is. Obviously, it's extremely tilting with like engine failures and you know <laughs> yeah, a you... first lap wreck. You know anything like that is not blown great. tire. Yeah, because those cars like if they blow a tire and like the fender bends, like they're gone. Like yeah. it's not like NASCAR. Like they get a couple of bumps. It's like all right, put the tires back on, go. Right. Like they're they're shut down. Yeah. It's so, cut. but there is a lot of especially at this point in the season. There's a pretty decent amount of predictability. Yeah. Plus the team stuff at play. Like it's. You know, you know how the teams are going to kind of favor the strategy and all that, but that's a different. Other than this weekend, two guys got disqualified for engine. That's fine. My uh, my post group parlay bet still hit. We're good. Jesus, (laughs) I don't get it. (laughs) It's not not meant to be got. Oh, all right. Uh, Let's take this. You want to take it to the patio? Yeah, we're gonna try to catch it in this Monday night game. So let's uh, let's head to the patio. All right, patios proudly sponsored by the only the finest beer. The finest brewed with there. the finest hops from the Pacific Northwest, and you know what? The best part about it is ninety six calories. Can you believe that? Unbelievable! My preferred beer, my patio, my preferred patio beer. The only, the only beer you should be drinking, Miller Lite. Appreciate their sponsorship of the patio, but. uh I think I'm going to kick it off this week. Go for it. This one hits a little close to home. I was just out of town for business. Um, Look, we got a little out over the skis on Monday night when I was up there. People from my office, you know, one went to college in Fort Wayne. She wanted to go back to one of her college bars. And I was like, not going to miss out. I have, I am, look, FOMO is a big fear of mine. I, you know that I I don't like missing out. So I will go to just about everything I can get my hands on. Like I'm going to be the guy. I don't care if I'm crawling into the bar, like I'm going to go. So leads me to my question. What's the worst decision you can make when you're out of town for like a work trip or yeah, yeah. We'll leave it at work trip. 
And I don't know how much traveling you've done for your job. I don't do a ton of it. I do a little bit of it, but not like a lot of overnight stays, maybe once or twice a year. But what's the worst decision you can make? Yeah, so I should say I don't have to do much traveling for my job. My previous job, I did a little bit. So I don't have a lot of experience here. Uh, I mean, it has to come down to either eating or drinking. Like, you look, you cannot, you can't get out over your skis, like, especially the first, this goes for any trip, really. The first <laughs> night, you cannot get out over your skis. <laughs> I Absolute, guess it depends on how many days you're gone for, right? That's Yeah, but it's a death sentence, because <laughs> then it just is a snowball. You're out of your element. You don't have the comfort you normally would have. All of a sudden, if you need, like, Say you need some hydration support <laughs> or some medicine, or now it's like an extra trip you got to try to make. And then the hotels you're probably staying at don't just have like a mini bar, like where no. you're like, hey, I'm going to grab a Gatorade out of here real quick. Right. You so, and then, you know, maybe you're sharing a rental car or something and you don't really have like freedom to do what you need to do, <laughs> that kind of thing. You, so that's like just an obvious one. You cannot do that. Uh, I think for me, it would have to be food choices. You cannot. <laughs> Put yourself in a bad spot, especially if you're like all day client meetings, you know, all that stuff. Or like if you're at a conference, like you're going into like yes. sessions there's and stuff like that. There's breakout sessions, yeah. there's, you know, keynote speakers, all this stuff. Like you got to make the most responsible eating choices. You cannot be choosing the Southwest <laughs> menu item. <laughs> Chipotle, you God can, forbid. <laughs> cannot get a Chipotle meal for lunch. You cannot, you know, like just douse chicken stuff wings. In a, like Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there are mistakes that can be made and it can straight up ruin the trip. And like I said, you don't have, you know, the comfort of being at home. You don't have yeah, everything you need readily available to you. Yeah, so it you can't be, just take timeouts and like, all right, I'm going to, you know, do this for 45 minutes or whatever it is. Like there's just, there's no way out of it. No. Uh, yeah. So I broke mine down a little bit just because I just recently went through this and I've been, I've been on like four day trips where I'm like, doing a bunch of training. I've been on like, this one was only a couple days. Like we actually one day we left Monday morning, stayed Monday night, came home Tuesday. I've made just about every mistake you can make. Maybe not outside the, like the drinking part. Right. Yeah. I've got out over the skis on a, on the first night, which actually is not the worst choice for you. It's not the worst. Th this past trip just how it happened the first night was the last night, but I've been on trips where it's like first night, second night. Okay. Like I'm here for four days. You start to tone it down at the end because the last thing you want to be in is a car hung over, like just obliterated, like three hour trip, four hour trip, two hour trip. The last thing you want to do is be in a car, just milking a massive hangover. Yeah, so I didn't even factor in the fact that you could be driving for a work trip. I because hell, I even on an airplane, I've, yeah, even on an airplane, airplanes hungover are not fun. Yeah, I can imagine. So I thought like drinking the last night that you're there, because I'll tell you this: on Tuesday, I was hurting all day, <laughs> all day. I <laughs> I wish I had taken a picture of this just for this moment. I didn't know I was going to ask this question. Yeah. But I'm sitting in the row. So we had like the la the first day we had like a bunch of breakout sessions, which were fine. You got kind of got some breaks. Shout out to my company. Did a phenomenal job of snack stations and like drink stations. Like all the liquid, dude, liquid IVs, you know, Diet Cokes, you know, coffee, ice coffee. Like they had everything set up. So I see that the first night. I'm like, even if I get in a really bad situation tomorrow, like I'm going to have – and out like I'm going to have like liquids around. So we, we have Monday night, get out over the skis. Didn't get back to my room to like two 30, just brutal. Got to be up at like seven 30. And I drink, I think I drink every liquid they had on the table. I had two liquid IVs, three diet Cokes, four coffees. And I look over at the people in my office are sitting in the same row and the guys just, I, all my dead soldiers are in front of me. I hadn't thrown anything away. I just had <laughs> liquids upon liquids in front of me, like empty cans, empty water bottles with liquid IV in them. And it was just like, I, and driving home, like it was the worst. The, like, and I got home and I'm like, oh my God, now I got to like take care of kids. 
like get kids in bed, bath night tonight, like literally laid them down in bed. I swear to God, I could not have been laying in bed for more than three minutes and fell asleep. It was just the last night is a no go. If you're on a business trip, you cannot get out over the skis the last night. You just, you just can't do it. Yeah. I've thought of two more since you were talking, okay. by the way. Uh, <laughs> food is a good one, though. I never really thought about the food thing, but... But also, the other side of that coin, never pass up an opportunity to eat. Because you do not know when the next one's coming. That is... That's... And if you're like me, I have to... The system needs to be maintained. I yep. need, like, a solid every three hours, something has to be going in. So, if you get stuck at a conference, you're in meetings all day or whatever, you don't know when the next meal's coming, you grab that trail mix... That bag of chips, that cookie that came with the thing, D- anything. Eat it all. Yeah, well, I calories don't, I, don't count. <laughs> you know, the worst part is the first day I made that mistake is you know I'm sitting at the table. They gave us like some box lunches or whatever, and I was like, ah, oh, man, it just doesn't look good. Yeah, like I eat like maybe half of it, and I'm like, yeah. And then I realize, so we like go, we get done five o'clock, go to the happy hour. They're like bussing us over, and I'm like. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Mm -hmm. And it's like six o'clock. And I'm like, I'm not even on the bus to go over there yet. And like, I didn't eat until like seven. I was dying, like literally dying. And like I said, they had snack stations, but I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if it was like, cause I was talking to people and this and that. Like, I just never grabbed a snack. I, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Cause I think I went a full 10 hours without eating, which I'm not like, I can skip meals here and there, but when you're talking about like, it, it'll it'll hit you too. Like even if you're not thinking about it, it just hits yeah. you. And it hit me at like five thirty. I'm like, shit. I'm not gonna eat for like another hour and a half. And it was I was I was I was dying at that point. And I was already like I already had a couple beers. I'm like, this could get ugly fast. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then so the second one. Look, we're both dads and husbands. Err on the side of over communicating with your spouse. Oh. <laughs> You've got. I made to... so many mistakes on this last. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to err on the side of over communication because whatever you're doing is not enough, especially for the bullets that they're taking back at the homestead with the kids, <sighs> yeah. with the dogs, whatever. Yeah, have yeah, to over communicate. My phone. My, Show phone the love. my phone. We went to. We started out at one bar after our party. When I went to the second bar, when we were walking out, my phone died. Okay, charge your phone is now on the list too. <laughs> I just made multiple mistakes at this on this trip, and it was, it was amateur hour. Maybe I'm a little rusty after COVID. You know, I don't know what it is. I mean, we had one last year, but it was in Cincinnati, so I slept in my own bed. Yeah. So I'm just a little. Maybe I'm just a little rusty post COVID. I don't know. I, I just Off made a lot of mistakes. This time around, just a ton of mistakes. Actually, you were witness to our last sales meeting. We were all of us were parked in your parking lot. Remember that? Yeah, it was a complete shit show. <laughs> yeah. A lot of hungover people walking out. Just I was not Rudolph. one of them, though, because I was at home. I went home, you know, slept in my own bed, went down the next day. Like it was all good. But this time around, being out of town, just they let the they let too much leash out for the dog in me. <laughs> <laughs> You tested every inch of the leash. Didn't you? Oh God! Oh yeah, I was I was the one like pulling their owner down the street. That was that was that's the type of dog I am. So, oh my gosh! All right, oh God, I love this travel topic. I uh, I'm throwing out the question that I came in here with because uh, I just like we talked about. I just came off vacation. What is your number one travel tip? Hmm. Can be air like if you're traveling for vacation, if you're traveling for whatever it is. Number one travel tip: invest in TSA pre pre check. Oh God, see, I haven't done that yet, but do, I know that's the move. I will tell you this: I found that out about two years ago when we were going out to Vegas. We weren't running late. It was just like it was the fact that it's like it was like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. The last thing you want to do is stand in a line. Yeah. Like you want to get to your gate and just lay there like a vegetable. Like two of the guys we went, Tim, Cody, TSA, TSA pre-check, they beat me and Sean to the gate by like an almost an hour. And we we saw them in the like we went in the lines at the same time. Beat us by almost an hour. TSA pre-check. I I used to be avidly against them. I ain't paying shit. That's stupid. <laughs> 
But like, if you fly, even if you fly twice a year, it's a wor- it's a hundred percent worth it. Yeah, just the the anxiety of waiting in line, especially if you're traveling with kids. The anxiety, just like waiting in line, trying to keep them together, like it's it's just madness. Like, just, I don't even think it's that expensive. I don't even know what I paid for mine, but it's it's whatever it was was a hundred percent worth it. Hundred percent worth, especially if. Like I think we both travel with kids more than not. Yeah. If you're traveling with kids, like skipping that line and getting through in the minimal amount of time needed, absolutely necessity. It's it's you have to have it. That's my big one. If I had to do an honorable mention, don't travel with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I've traveled with kids a decent amount since we've had kids. Danielle, on the other hand, has not, but she has since. She was just like, I walked in the airport and she's like, I thought I was forgetting something. Yeah. She was like, but then I realized that I didn't have kids with me. So I had like a tenth of the items that I usually have to carry with me. You have two free hands for once. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that that's an honorable mention, but the TSA pre-check is an absolutely like I used to be avidly against it, but now I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, no, that's a good call. Uh, I think mine's probably pretty obvious, but I also feel like for people that do travel maybe once or twice a year, don't check a bag ever. Yeah. Like, if it can be avoided, which I think the only case that I would check a bag is if I'm bringing my golf clubs. The- do not check a bag, and it will save you 95% of possible issues you can have. During air travel. Yeah, they they reel you in with the free bag, though. Um, I will say, I'm on the fence about that. Do not check a bag. I'll take it a step farther. Don't take a carry-on. Fit all of your stuff in your personal item. <laughs> Jam it in the seat in front of you. I, I'm on the fence about that, because the first time I went out to Vegas a couple years ago, I didn't check a bag. I'm like, I'm checking my golf clubs. That's the only thing I'm checking. Yeah. And I had to carry on. It was like one of those, I don't know if you've seen like those ones that roll, like the bags that roll out and then they roll back up yep, and you can yep. zip them. So I had one of those and there's plenty of clothes. We were only out there. We got out there Sunday. We're leaving like Wednesday night. So it was plenty, plenty of room for what I needed it for. And the golf bag, as you know, like any golfer knows, those golf bags become like a second suitcase. You can just start stuffing stuff in there as long as it stays under 50 pounds. But, like, I was carrying it through the airport. I'm like, this is a pain in the ass. Like, carrying this fucking bag around. And our airport is terrible. Like, it's a long walk to bo- the two the two terminals. I'm like, this is a pain in the ass. I'm like, I'm checking this bitch on the way back. I'm like, I get a free bag, too. Like, I, they really end, though. But I've, ha- I've had horror stories where you check a bag, and next thing you know, you're going to Los Angeles, and your bag ends up in Seattle. Not good. Exactly. And they don't like, you're like, oh, they're going to cover it. It's like, no, you spend all your money. And then if they find it, you have to take all those clothes back. They don't reimburse you for those clothes. Yeah. It's a mad, it's, it's madness. Yeah. So that's what, that's my tip. Uh, I think I would also, what I've come to learn over the years too, is like two things. One, especially with the rise of Airbnb and stuff, you can do laundry. Like don't, you don't have to bring as much stuff. And also... I, I used to be in this boat. I feel like a lot of people are overpacking of like underwear and socks. <laughs> like you can just buy that stuff. You don't know my stuff. track history though. I <laughs> do know your track, your track history. Uh, <laughs> but like those items like that, you can just go buy. If you really are in that bad of a spot where you need them, you can go buy them that's, and throw them out. If that's you can't true. It reminds me of a meme I saw on Instagram. This is probably like six months ago. It was like, why do I always pack for a trip with with the amount of underwear, like I'm gonna shit my pants seven times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like you might make the mistake once, but you're not gonna make it like a handful of times. Right. And if you are, you probably should just be staying in your house or condo or wherever the hell you're staying because you're unwell. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I'm a habitual overpacker sometimes too. I used to be. I've weaned myself off uh, big time. Cause I do, I come back like even the 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 the, the, the one day trip I just took, like I open my bag, I'm like didn't wear this, didn't wear that. I'm yeah, like, and then you're like, oh well, hell? now I'm washing it anyway because it's yeah. dirty. It was yeah, I'm like it was in there with a bunch of dirty clothes. Yeah. It's just that's the worst part is when you take clothes and they're clean and you have to wash them because they're just in a bag with dirty clothes. So here I also this is another one. I, God, this is great. Uh, I keep forgetting to do this, but bring like 
one of those like drawstring bags or something for dirty clothes. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. that I I have yet to actually remember to execute it, but that is yeah. Because like you get in you get in wherever you're staying, like they. Yeah, you don't have a hamper. You're just throwing stuff everywhere. Yeah, and like garbage you know. bag, maybe. I mean, you don't have like the massive amounts of, you know, plastic bags from grocery shopping right. at your disposal like you do at your house. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, just bring like a small like zippable duffel. That's or, a really you know, a good idea. I never even thought about that. Chuck all your dirty stuff in that. It's like your hamper for the week and then boom. <sighs> Man, that's, I'm going to start doing that. This is now a travel podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I d- yeah, I mean, and honestly... The the other one that I was just kind of thinking about, I only travel with my passport now. Like, yeah, it just seems easier. Like, then having like rip your wallet out, like, oh, here's my ID. Then you don't put it back in your wallet. Like, it's, it's the passports like you hand it to them, boom, right back in your book bag. Never have to get it out again. Like, I feel like the ID and the wallet thing like just leaves too much like gray area of like your wallet falling out and then. You know, you forget it or, what? you know, who knows what could happen. Pre-check could be a totally different game, I'm sure. But, like, regular TSA lines, they're getting better about, like, you don't have to scan, like, your boarding pass. And yeah. Your, like, they just check your ID or whatever and let you through and all that. They do. They scan, like, the kids' ones and stuff. But it's gotten a slowly, incrementally better. But I do, like, can we just already get, we have virtual bo- boarding passes. Can we just get our IDs on our phones already? Like, I, that is actually a very, that's a very good point. I mean, I don't know why that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. It's probably a security thing, I'm sure. But yeah, okay. But okay, but like you bank on your phone. Exactly. You you know, you have you probably have your social security numbers in nine different spots on your phone whether you yeah, know it or not. For sure. So what does it matter if your ID's on there? Yeah, I'm just trying we just need to every little step we can to streamline it. I'm here for. Look. You know, TSA, I'm available for consulting fees. <laughs> I'm easily bought. <laughs> <laughs> we are easily bought. Yeah, we. I, th- <laughs> throw me in here, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are all pretty good. I just, yeah, the, traveling, it's, it can be so stressful, especially with kids. Like, I just know, like, the last time we flew with kids, you just have exponentially more stuff. And now my kids oh, are at yeah. the age of, like, they're a little bit older. They've got to have their own bag and this and that. And I'm like, it was so much easier when you were small and like you didn't even know what a bag was and I could just like fit everything in mine. Yeah. You now, know, now it's like, you know, you got three tablets you got to take with you and three yeah, different they, suitcases they all need and their stuffed animals. And then they and like, you know, they, they, they want to push it for like the first 15 then minutes they and then yep. all of a sudden it's like, yeah, this kind of sucks. And I'm like, that's why I don't have a push bag with me. Like I'm not an idiot. And you know, <laughs> it just turns into an absolute mess. So shout out to all the parents out there who have actually traveled with their kids and been that person on an airplane, too. We all know what we're talking about, the crying kid. Yeah. But you know what? It is what it is. Like, th- there's so many noise-canceling things right now. Like, throw your headphones in. Like, you think I wanted to do this for 15 hours driving to Florida? No, this is why we're on a fucking plane right now. Yeah. Like, so shout out to all the parents who have ever traveled with kids. It's not easy. Definite shout out. All right. It's a good patio beer session. Yeah. Felt good to be back. Yeah, I think those were pretty good questions too. I think yeah, I like the travel theme. It was good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of traveling. I, Just don't eat chicken wings before you get on the airplane or something. No. That should have been in the travel tips too. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, all the food stuff I said about traveling for work and all that. Yeah, that, applies that goes to for her airplanes. Pre-flight, which I'm in incredibly guilty of doing. <laughs> oh, so. God, yeah. Oh, I just, when I think of that, I just remember our guy, Ryan talking about, he, he doesn't, I guess Donato's doesn't sit well with him. Yeah. And he was like, I think it was like one of the first time he traveled for work and he ate like Donato's the night before he got on an airplane. (laughs) I will say this on record. Like I am one of those that like, if I have to go, I go, I will tell you this. I will sweat it out holding a number two on an airplane. Like I've refused to do it. Refuse. Like, yeah. some people are shameless. They'll just go in and do it. I will not. I just can't do it. Can't do it. Never have. Never will. I'll be that lady that <laughs> became famous. You just see me in my shit up and down the highway. <laughs> Nobody like, needs that. Like, I just won't do Dude, people are shameless, though, man. They will just do it. Like, no shame in their game. I mean, if duty calls, you have to. But luckily, I've been I've able to I've never been that. in that situation. Yeah, me too. But I've also never taken a transatlantic flight. 
Okay. I feel like I could get into some sticky situations on uh, like a long, long flight like that. It's possible. Like I feel like it's just like you, you, you kind of, like if you're taking like a ten hour flight, it's gonna it's something's gonna fall in that ten hours unless you're sleeping the whole time. Sure. So, all right. <laughs> that just came to my mind. I'm like, it's a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're sitting by the bathroom. Brutal. Ugh. Brutal. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I think that does it for this week. Uh, obviously, a couple of housekeeping things. If you're listening, hopefully you're subscribed. Hopefully you've rated us, reviewed us. Five stars. Something nice would be great. Yeah. We'll get, uh, we're going to get back on our Instagram game here. Yeah, we took a little bit of a hiatus <laughs> hiatus there with the travels and everything else. Uh, but, hey, you know, we're going to get out and play some fall golf this weekend. Get some good videos and pictures. We'll oh, yeah. get out there for the people. Um, yep. And then, of course, Turkey Open. Hit us up. Get involved. Join us out there. Black I mean, Friday. what like, what else are you doing on Black Friday? Like, that's what you really have to ask. Yeah. Like, you're either playing in this tournament or you're sitting at home while your wife or significant other probably shops. Like, Sounds that's right. pretty much all you're doing. So you might as well be on a golf course. You know what? We get after it afterwards too. We go down, go down to the bar down the street, do all the scoring. It's a, yeah, it's at a the nice very little, minimum, nice you're gonna have party. fun. Yeah. yeah, at the very minimum. So, all right. On that note, yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get Thank you for listening to another episode of the Back Nine Six Pack. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Back Nine Six Pack for all your content needs. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers.